Certainly, thank you for being here. This is quite a tribute. For anyone that does not know me, I'm Al Belsey. I am the baby of the family. I lived for that for a couple of years now. <laughs> In 1982, I had the tremendous experience of coaching a baseball team to the state tournament in Wausau. It was the first time, in my knowledge, Rod, you can help me on this, but I think it was the first time that any team went to a state tournament in Lodi's history. Mom said to me while we were there, that she said, my dad was very proud of me today. Well, <clears throat> history repeats itself. Yesterday, I was at a basketball game, when I won, and I got a chance to watch one of my grandsons perform at halftime. <laughs> Mom is someplace today rooting for all that. To give you a little perspective of how old mom was, think about this. She was three years old when the Titanic went down. She had brothers that fought in World War I. She was extremely involved in the FBI investigation of the Lindbergh kidnapping, which was the crime of the century in that decade. She is taking things to her grave that she would never, ever tell us or anyone else. She had many relatives that fought in World War II. She had a son-in-law that was a CB. Bill has been on more tours of duty than he probably cares to remember. She had seven grandsons. Now think about what she had to put up with. <laughs> she went from death to 63 years later, Gloria. <clears throat> she saw a lot of history. She lived it. Think of the things that occurred in the 20th century that we take for granted. I would like to take just a moment or two to thank some of the people that made her life memorable. This is a very tough list because you're always going to forget somebody, overlook somebody, but I feel pretty comfortable with who I came up with and if I have overlooked you, you have our eternal gratitude. I really want to thank Paul for taking over the responsibility of the farm. I want to thank my wife Joan for being willing to put up with my mother on several trips that we went on. <laughs> but I expect her to thank me for putting up with her mother. <laughs> She owes me more than I owe her. <laughs> One real quick example. Alaska. We went on a 12-day tour of Alaska. Third day out, they went blind. For nine days, for the rest of the tour, we listened to how blind they were going. They didn't know what to do about it. We got home, and the next day her mom went to the optometrist, and we found out the problem. They had traded glasses on the third day. <laughs> this was not funny. I would like to thank my sister Beth for taking all care of all the health needs, especially the last couple of weeks. I want to thank the staff of Ingleside. 
they're not just there earning a paycheck. They're there because they love the people they're working with. That was very clear. Also, I'm a state pastor. You wear a lot of birthdays and a lot of other things. And uh, it's quite a guy. I can't stand up here and not include the farm. Mom, the farm is looking good. No, we are not selling the farm to strangers. <laughs> I've been grilled on that for 20 years or more. The farm was in her blood. And there's a reason why. That farm goes back to 1846, which was two years before Wisconsin became the state. The first meeting of this congregation was held under a tree in that farm someplace. I'm not exactly sure where, but somewhere, somebody knows where. The first gravestone that you see as you go to the burial site, if you're going right out there, it's got spawn and very loud and clear on it. First one anyone sees when they enter the cemetery, and that is her <coughs> heritage, that's our heritage. I challenge all of our relatives here today to appreciate the heritage this farm has for us. Today we celebrate the life and times of Cora Bilsey. Tomorrow we celebrate the next great, great, I think I can stop there, grandson. Another great? <laughs> <laughs> with Nick and Ada. The circle of life continues. Thank you, God. Thank you, Mom. And say hi to Dad. Hello, I'm Steve Elber. I'm one of those seven grandsons. Um, I just thought I'd like to say that I was thinking about my grandma the last week and what can I say and instead of hitting on everything, let me just concentrate on a couple of thoughts. One is um, all of the food that she cooked and I've just been thinking of her not just for family gatherings, all of the, the Christmases and Easter's and such, um, just the meals that we had there as well as the things that she baked and brought up to church here for events like this and other things, you know, taking food and cookies to people and some thoughts I had along those lines, one of the earlier treats I had was something called cream bread. And it sounds bad to me now I even, but back then it was pretty good. You'd take a piece of white bread, pour cream all over it, bury it in brown sugar, and eat up. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we, from that, I, I'm thinking of all of the, the big Christmas dinners with, of course, the Lutefisk, the Lefsa, and the Rumabrat, so she taught us to be Norwegians. And, if you didn't eat Udafis, the number of Christmas presents went down. <laughs> so, but we also, us cousins, had something going on. Um, after Christmas dinner, we had a tradition. It was called All-Star Wrestling in the Living Room. <laughs> so the seven of us, I don't know that we even cared who won. We just wanted to get a couple of good throws in. And we enjoyed that, and she put up with all of that, too. And then, of course, I had to be proud that uh, a few years later, I end up with a couple of sons, and we get to go hunting at Grandma's Hunting Lodge. And Grandma is the camp cook. And so, you know, get up early in the morning, and Grandma's already got bacon and eggs and everything going on. And she fed us well, and at the same time, I have to say this. Anybody can hunt a deer, but if you can go out in the woods reeking of bacon and get a deer. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Grandma, and uh, on to the next. Hello everybody, I'm David, uh, second. Um, a lot of times you have a hard time remembering how old some older people are, but Grandma was born in 1909 and I was born in 59, so it made it pretty easy that she was like 50 years older than me. And back after high school, I was 20, she was 70, I moved in with her, and we had a pretty good time down here. I'd, uh, 
fill up the old John Deere tractor with gasoline and stuff and help her get on it. And for the next three, four hours, she'd have the time of her life. So she took a little bit of care of the farm down there. And a little funny story is down in the basement, she had two or three freezers. And if you opened any of them up, they were all just solid ice. <laughs> they were all full of food and stuff. And I think some of the food was probably back in there. Depression, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> they, they learned how to save their. Yeah, she grew up through a you know, pretty pretty tough time where you just didn't go up to the grocery store you know, every day or every other day. So that's part of the stuff I need to remember about her. So thank you. out of the oven yet because this is going to take a while. <laughs> got number four out of eight people are going to speak. <laughs> so we'll try to keep it short because the Lord is going to win the championship today and I think uh, Grandma might have something to do with that. I came up with three words to remember Grandma. First one is the loving. Grandma was always loving to everyone. She was an example to all of us about love. Never forget, at every birthday was a homemade angel food cake, homemade icing, everything from scratch. She taught us compassion, patience. She taught us left power, right power. <laughs> <laughs> when to keep your partner in the hand and when to go alone. <laughs> and she taught us never to cheat because we couldn't get away with any of it. <laughs> and I would always remember her homemade but frozen cookies and fry cakes. She helped me get an A in Mrs. Cull's foods class using her famous apple pie recipe including homemade crust. So Number one is loving. Number two is family. I looked it up in the dictionary last night. The most instinctive, fundamental social group in man or animal, persons related by blood or marriage, relatives, and cave folk. Mr. Webster must have talked to her before he put those words down in the book because when I looked at those words, I saw Grandma. She was the glue to keep this family together. She still is. She even made glue. We politely called it glue. <laughs> As Mind us, uh, there were no presents unless everybody ate a brisk at Christmas. And I think I buried mine underneath the mashed potatoes. <laughs> the third thing I'll remember Grandma for always 